Bob Hepler. The headlinesman is William Makepeace, the field judge, Ed Bronson, and the backfield judge is Jerry Mark Britt. As Frank told you, Notre Dame won the toss, elected to receive. They'll defend the goal to our right, which is the south goal. Michigan State will kick off and defend the goal to our left, which is the north goal as we sit on the left, on the west side of the field, high in the press box. Dick Kenny, number 42, will be kicking off for Michigan State, going back deep for Notre Dame. In the center is Rocky Blyer. On his right is Quinn, and on his left, Bob Gladjo. And this football game is just about to get under the way. People have called it the dream game of the century. And in my long association with football, I can't think of any game that has ever attracted the national attention as this game has. Nick Kenny at the 40. And he's ready. There's the kick. High end over end being taken by Conjar at the 14-yard line. Back to the 15, 20, and to the 27-yard line. Terry Henratty, the quarterback, first and 10 from the 26. Larry Conjar over the 30-yard line to the 31 or 2. 31. Ladjo and Seymour are to the right. Second and six. Handoff goes to the right halfback, and he's up to the 35-yard line. Number 28, Bob Blyer. Third down, and about two at the 35. Quarterback sneak by Hanratty. He's over the 40 to the 45-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. Tackle made by Jeff Phillips. Oh. Hanratty, the quarterback. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Conjar over left tackle, and he's to the 49-yard line. Jeff Richardson makes the stop. Hanratty calls the signals. It's the fullback Conjar right up the center. He's over the 50-yard line to about the 49, where he's tackled by Big Bubba Smith. Third and five. It's the draw play to Blyer, and he's stopped. Back at his own 47-yard line by Jeff Richardson. Kevin Hardy is back to kick for Notre Dame. Brenner back to receive for Michigan State. Hardy gets the kick away. It's a beauty. High spiral taken at the 13-yard line by Brenner. And he's brought down by Gladio back at the 11-yard line on a beautiful defensive. First and 10 from the 11. Jimmy Ray keeps the ball himself, and he's knocked down immediately behind the line of scrimmage by John Horney at the 9-yard line. Second and 11 at their own 9-yard line. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He looks. And he fumbles the football. It's recovered by Michigan State back at the four-yard line. Alan Page had a great deal of flag on the play. Delay a game against Michigan State. Line. Jimmy Ray calls the signals. Option play. He keeps the football. He's got it. He's out, outside the five to the seven-yard line. And knocked down by Tom O'Leary. There today. Notre Dame refuses the penalty. be fourth and 14. Kenny into kick now for Michigan State. Tom Shane back deep at, the, at his 50 at the 50-yard line. There's the kick. It's away. It's rather short. Bounces at the 45 into Notre Dame territory. It's going to go all the way down to the 40-yard line. Now inside the 40 to the 38. A good kick that time by Dick Kenny. It was rather short, but Shane could not get up to it, so he had to let it bounce. With Gladjo to the right. It's first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. Seymour is to the left. There's the snap. Hanratty goes back to pass. He throws. And it's incomplete at the 45-yard line. Hanratty, the quarterback. Blyer, one of the setbacks. It's a screen pass, incomplete, intended for Blyer at his 30-yard line. On the right side. Hanratty calls the signal. He goes back to pass. He's being rushed. He gets away from one tackler. He now throws. And it's complete to Gladio at the 36-yard line of Michigan State. He's left side. And Raddy calls the signals, hands the ball to Gladio, and he's to the 35-yard line, a gain of a yard on the play. He's knocked down by Pat Gallinaw. Seymour is split to the left. And Raddy gets the ball. He goes back to pass. He's going to run around the right side now. He cuts inside the 35 and is knocked down at the 33-yard line. Chuck Thornhill making the tackle for Michigan State. Thornhill, the left side linebacker. Jim Seymour splits to the left. Blyer is in the slot to the left side. 
And ready. Gets the ball. Rolls to his left. He throws. And it is incomplete. Intended for Rocky Flyer at the 25. A fine defensive play by Jess Phillips. Our line of Michigan State to kick the football. There's the snap. It's low. He catches it on first bounce. He's going to run with it. Now he throws it. And it's incomplete to no one down at the 10-yard line. Of course, we're going to have several people. There's a flag on the play. All of the, Michi all of the Notre Dame linemen, of course, were downfield. Clinton Jones, the deep man in the eye. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. There's the snap. The handoff goes to the fullback. And he's knocked down immediately at the line of scrimmage. Michigan State out of the huddle with second nine at their own 34. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, goes to his right. He wants to throw. He completes it at the 40-yard line. And rolling on to the 45-yard line goes White Lee. The tackle is made by John Horney and Jim Lynch. Come the Spartans. There's the snap. Dwight Lee keeps the football over right tackle. He's to the 50 and down to the Notre Dame 46-yard line. The tackle is made by John Pergeen. What a ball carrier for a quarterback. A gain of eight on that last play. It's second and two. The ball at the Notre Dame 47. There's the snap. It's Ray again. Same play, but he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Jim Lynch right there to put the clamp on him. Hardy got it to him on first bounce. It's third and two at the Notre Dame 47. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. Rolls to his left. He looks to throw, and he's knocked down. It's incomplete. John Pergeen in there along with John Horney. For Notre Dame, Kenny standing at his own 39-yard line. There's the snap. It's a good one. And the kick is away. It's very high, but very short. Tom Shane calls for the fair catch, and he's knocked down. There'll be a penalty against Michigan State. Interfering with the fair catch, I'm sure, will be the call. We'll have to wait, of course, officially. That's Notre Dame replacing Gedeke. It's first and 10 Irish from the 35. Handoff goes to the fullback. Larry Conjar over left tackle. He's out to the 38-yard line. Notre Dame from their own 37-yard line. O'Brien is under the center. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He throws, and it is incomplete. At the 50-yard line, the pass was intended for Rocky Blyer. The more is split to the left. Coley O'Brien is the quarterback. He calls the signals. There's the snap. He's back to pass. He's being rushed. He throws. It's complete. Out here to Glad Joe, however, he's dropped right at the 35-yard line. There's a penalty marker on the play. Standing at his own 20-yard line to kick the football. Last time he got a bad snap, and he gets a rather low one this time. However, he gets it, gets the boot away, and it's a good one. Long spiral. Fair catch call for back at the 27-yard line by Phillips. Lavender and Clint Jones in the backfield. Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. There's the snap. Ray goes back to pass. Plenty of time. Throws long downfield to Washington. And he's got it at the 30-yard line of Notre Dame. Gene Washington. Calling for quiet. First and 10 at the Notre Dame, 31. The handoff goes to Clinton Jones over right tackle. And he stopped at the 26-yard line. Jimmy Ray. The quarterback hands the ball to Clinton Jones. He's hit one time, gets away from one tackler, piles away from two, and makes it down to the 21-yard line. So, third and one. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. He keeps it himself. He's brought down as he tries right tackle, and he is very close to the first down. Put the ball at the Notre Dame 21-yard line. Jimmy Ray on the quarterback sneak. He's got the first down inside the 20. Jimmy Ray gets the ball. It's the option to the right. He's brought down right at the line of scrimmage. John Pergeen, Tom. And let's see what we have. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Notre Dame nothing and Michigan State nothing. Second quarter action just about to get underway here from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Jim Morris calls the signals, gets the ball, hands it off to number 25, his fullback Cavender, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Regis Cavender, Lee, Cavender, and Jones. There's the snap. The handoff goes to Cavender over left tackle. He's inside the five-yard line. Jimmy Ray 
Calls the signals. There's the snap. The handoff goes to his right halfback, Jones, over left tackle. No gain on the play. Jimmy Ray, their quarterback, calls the signals. There's the snap. Cavender gets the ball. Touchdown over right tackle. Regis Cavender scores for Michigan State. Good hard driving run by Cavender on the off tackle slant. There was no doubt about it. His momentum was going fine. Carried him on in. And now Nick Kenny comes out with his tape measure and his right foot as bare as you please for the try for point by placement. 13 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the half. Michigan State 6, Notre Dame nothing. On 29 of them. And he's in the ball game now to attempt the extra point for Michigan State. There's the snap. The ball is spotted. It's up in the air, and it's good. The score is Michigan State 7, Notre Dame nothing. Seen action. Earlier has not seen action in this football game thus far. He has a bad right shoulder. There's the kickoff by Kenny. It's short, being taken at the 14-yard line by Conjar. He's up to the 20, 25, and to the 27-yard line. 10 at their own 26-yard line. There's the snap. He hands the ball off to Blyer to the 30, to the 35, and to the 37-yard line. The tackle. Coley O'Brien in his quarterback for Notre Dame. He calls the signal, hands off straight ahead to Conjar. And Conjar is over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Jeff Richardson makes the stop for Michigan State. Two or 42 and a half. I formation. Blyer the deep man in the eye. Coley O'Brien gets the ball, hands off to Blyer. He puts his head down, and he's to the 45-yard line. It's Seymour to the right, and Blyer to the left. Gladjo in the slot now to the right. And it looks like we're going to have an offside penalty against Notre Dame as the ball is thrown and completed to Stenger at the 45-yard line of Michigan State. Notre Dame, the ball is at the 38-yard line. Check that, the 40-yard line. As O'Brien calls signals, gets the ball, rolls to his left now. He throws down the middle. It's incomplete. Intended for Seymour right over the middle. First time this year we've seen him punt. There's the snap. He gets the kick away, and it's a good spiral this time. And it's Brenner. At, he lets the ball bounce. He looked like he was going to catch it for a moment. But he lets it bounce down. It rolls inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. And well defended by Notre Dame. Ball Siler down there. Jimmy Ray calling signals from his own 19. <laughs> Senior Clint Jones stopped in a hurry. He's the number one rusher for the Spartans. Alan Page, number 81, the defensive right end for the awesome foursome up front for Notre Dame, made the play. There is no game. It is second down and 10, and there is Coach Duffy Doherty and his staff and players. Jimmy Ray, a junior quarterback, only five feet, 10 inches tall, 170 pounds. And there you saw that tiny little fella go from his own 19 to his own 47. What a gain. When you have a ball carrier who is also a fine passer and he rolls out with the option to pass or run, if he gets outside the end, the leverage man, you have the defense in a totally untenable position. It was a called pass. Ray saw that the secondary was dropped back as he got around the end and he turned on that speed. And it was a 28 yard run, but first and 10 for Michigan State from their own 47. They lead 7 to nothing. Dwight Lee, who was squirming and turning, number 34. If he could have turned one more time, he had a blocker ahead of him. In the front, he didn't go all the way, but it's a first down at the Notre Dame 37. A simple veer buck play with the guard and the tackle of Michigan State double teaming and the ball carrier Lee simply running away from the linebacker. You can see the split here on the Notre Dame line to spread that front four. Very good. Regis Cavender, the sophomore fullback, carries on the play, and Pete Duranko, number 50 in on the play, John Pergine, 
And the carry is to the 36, a gain of one. So it'll be second down and nine. Here's the Notre Dame defense, which includes Tom Rhodes, Pete Duranko, John Pergine, Tom O'Leary, Jim Lynch, John Horney, Kevin Hardy, Alan Page, Jim Smithberger, Dave Martin, and Tom Shane. Jimmy Ray. Interception. Jim Lynch intercepted that ball and apparently was hit hard. Fumble and Clint Jones recovered. Lynch is hobbling around in front of his defensive huddle. An interception by Jim Lynch hit hard and then Jones recovers for Michigan State, bud. A beautiful play by Dick Lynch. Uh, he picked the ball off perfectly. He didn't have quite time to put it away before he was hit, and believe me, he was hit hard. There he is, number 61, a great leader from Lima, Ohio. First and 10 now in the exchange of the balls at the 37. The White Lee. He was hit quickly by Pete, or rather Kevin Hardy, number 74, and John Horney. The running attack of Michigan State has caused Notre Dame to change their defense slightly. Their two outside linebackers have been up on the line, making it a 6-2 defense rather than a 4-4. If Michigan State continues to move the ball with their running attack, we'll see more of that alignment. Now, the rushing unit of Michigan State is number two in the nation. Notre Dame's is ninth. That offensive line you're looking at of Michigan State is not large, but they are quick. But they were not out of the huddle quickly enough. So we got a delay of the game penalty. You must snap that ball in 25 seconds after it's made ready for play. With the crowd noise that we have today, Chris, it's very difficult sometimes in the huddle to hear the quarterback. He doesn't want to call anything loudly enough for the defense to hear it, and there's tremendous volume and a tremendous enthusiasm in this crowd. Now we have a split end to the far side for one of the few times, and it's Gene Washington as we look at Ray. Dwight Lee is a wingback. Washington. Tom O'Leary forced Washington that split end out of bounds and stop action, bud. Analyze it for us. When you have the kind of speed Washington does, the defensive secondary must give room. You can see O'Leary dropping back. Washington made the sideline cut a perfect throw by Jimmy Ray. His momentum took him out of bounds before he could turn upfield. Okay, bud. Jimmy Ray now has thrown five passes. He has completed three. Michigan State has seven first downs to Notre Dame's three. They have another first down, and it's at the Notre Dame 26. Clint Jones in the slot. Cavender carried on the play. Corny is number 51. 64 is Duranko for the Notre Dame defense. 81 is Page. 61 is Captain Jim Lynch. So... Michigan State gained one yard to the Notre Dame 25. It'll be second down and nine. Michigan State leads seven to nothing. Six minutes, 17 seconds left in the first half. State scored after a minute and 40 seconds of the second quarter. Quick pass to Gene Washington. He was right at that spot, and Tom Shane, number seven, made the tackle, but a marker is down at the line of scrimmage. One of the Michigan State men moved back to protect the passer just before the ball was snapped, so it's illegal motion on the part of Michigan State. There you see the signal given by Howard Wirtz from Cincinnati, Ohio, the referee, and the down, of course, will be uh, still second down, but the yardage is going to be second down and 14, and the ball comes back out to the 30-yard line. Michigan State marching 73 yards in 10 plays with... The fullback, Regis Cavender, Cavender scoring. Alan Brenner split to the near side. Brenner going out, double covered. Down the middle, Pete Washington. Washington covered by Tom Shane. So now it's a third and 14. Videotape stop action coming up. They're in the wing set, unbalanced line. Washington appears to be open. Shane comes up. Had the ball not been drilled as hard as it was, he might have made the interception here because he certainly was in position to do so. The ball got through him. Washington has it on his fingertips, but can't quite hold it. You're watching the nation's number one and two teams battling it out here at the tail end of the season. Third and 14 for Michigan State. 
Printer going out on a pass pattern. Ray being rushed by Kevin Hardy. Regis Cavender, the fullback, was in the area of the pass. And coming in defensively was Dave Martin, number 56. So uh, now let's see if Michigan State with a fourth down and 14 will try a field goal. Number 42 is in the lineup, Dick Kenny, who sort of sneaks up on the ball every time he kicks. There is his bare foot. He is a Hawaiian, and he'd much rather have it in the sand and surf of the Hawaiian waters. I'm sure it'd be a little warmer. From the 36, it's a 46-yard boot. It's long enough. It's good! From the 36 plus the 10 yards of the end zone, a 46-yard boot by Dick Kenny of Michigan State as we have a timeout here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, where the score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame. Uh, with this telecast going live to Hawaii for the first time ever in television history, I'm sure after Hawaiian Dick Kenny kicked a 46-yard field goal for Michigan State, but they're probably doing the hula. I would expect so, Chris. Here he is now, ready to kick off. And his shoe was still off. There is Tom Quinn coming out to the 15, now the 20, the 25, the 30. Good blocking in front of him. Coming out to the 40, the 45, and down to about the 47-yard line. A beautiful return by Tom Quinn, number 19, as George Chatless made the tackle, but now Notre Dame for the first time as a result of a return of a kick is in excellent field position. When you cover the kick with as much enthusiasm as Michigan State did, you have one wave. The Notre Dame blocking broke through that wave, which set up the fine return. <laughs> Seymour split, Gladio flanked, Coley O'Brien fakes. Good protection. Down the middle to Seymour. And Seymour has yet to catch a forward pass here today as Notre Dame now has thrown eight. They have completed two. That's only the second one that they have thrown to Seymour thus far. So it'll be a second down and ten for the Fighting Irish from their own 46. A team that won eight straight this year. Michigan State also undefeated with nine victories. Gladio and Seymour to the near side at the bottom of your screen. There is Bob Gladio, a sophomore from Louisville, Ohio, who's replacing the injured Nick Eddy at halfback. Jim Summers makes the stop. Beautiful play. Coley O'Brien completing it. And it is at the Michigan State 43, a Notre Dame first down. He got a tremendous rush that time, but had presence to roll out away from the rush, which gave him time to complete the pass. Slot formation. Blair in the slot. Inside Seymour. O'Brien. Conjure blocking. There was a slot man, Bob Blyer, who was really hit at the sideline by Jess Phillips, number 38. Michigan State has had the rush on both of the last two downs. O'Brien has been able to roll out away from it, and the Irish line has done a tremendous job of picking up the shooting linebackers. That was a nine-yard gain. So for Notre Dame, with second and one, Michigan State leads seven to nothing. Four minutes, 36 seconds left in the first half. Coley O'Brien, the quarterback. Deep is Gladio. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Coley O'Brien. It was a beautiful arch pass, and Bob Gladio gets it, and it's O'Brien's first touchdown pass as a Notre Dame representative. A happy boy. So now we can have the score tied up. Correction. It's 10 to nothing with the field goal by Kenny. So now it's 10 to 6. It is up and it is good. Joe Azero doing the booting for Notre Dame. And Michigan State still in the lead. Azaro kicks off for Notre Dame. It's right down the middle. Taken at the 14-yard line. Back to the 15, 20, 25. 
And to the 32-yard line goes Frank Waters. Out of the huddle come the Spartans. Unbalanced line to the left this time. Jimmy Ray gets the ball, rolls to his left. He's being chased by Page. And Page can't get him. He's going to run him to the 30, the 35, the 40. And to the 45-yard line goes Jimmy Ray. Knocked out of bounds. So it's second down and 11, a loss of a yard on that play instead of a big gain. Jimmy Ray goes back, rolls to his right, he throws over here, and it's complete and then knocked down. The receiver, Gene Washington, had that football from their own 31-yard line. Washington is split to the right. There's the snap. Here's the draw play to the fullback, and he's dropped right at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Hardy and Pete Kenny now in the football game to punt for Michigan State on 4th and 13. He stands at his own 15-yard line. There's the snap. There's the kick. It's an end-over-end this time, coming to Shane at the 40. He returns it to the 45, and believe me, that's all. Great defensive play that time for Michigan State. Get a key. First and 10 from the Notre Dame 45. Seymour is to the left. O'Brien is the quarterback. There's the snap. He rolls to his left. He looks. He throws. And it's over the head of the intended receiver, way out on the far side of the Glad Joe flanked a little bit to the right. Eye formation in the backfield, and back to pass. And the handoff now goes to Blocky Blyer. He's over the 45, over the 50, and into Michigan State territory at the 48-yard line. Good fake to Seymour. And Blyer to the left. O'Brien keeps the football over left tackle, and he does not get the first down. Hit very hard over there on the far side of the field by Bubba Smith is back deep for the Spartans. There's the snap. Good one this time. Gets the kick away. High spiral. Bouncing at the 15. Takes a Notre Dame bounce. And it's stopped at the two-yard line by Notre Dame. Down there very quickly. For the out of the huddle come the Spartans. First and 10 from their own one-yard line. Quarterback sneak by Jimmy Ray. Gets out to about the three or four-yard line. He can stay out of the huddle now and up to the line of scrimmage. Ray, the quarterback, calls the signals. There's the snap. He gets the ball, rolls to his right. He's to have perhaps the five-yard line, but that's all. John Horney, John left side this time is Dwight Lee. There's the snap. Quarterback sneak by Ray, and he's out to the seven or eight-yard line. Shy of the first. The clock, two, one. And there's the end of the first half with the scoreboard reading. Michigan State 10 and Notre Dame 7. There is the smokestack and a Notre Dame man hung in effigy. And with the smoke almost going straight up, you realize that there is very little wind here today on a 30-degree afternoon. But we enjoyed the band at halftime. I guess the players were probably talked to in the dressing rooms. Chris, at this time of the season, everything that you've hoped, prayed for since the first day of spring practice carried you through in the case of Notre Dame eight games Michigan State nine games is now all at stake in the final 30 minutes everything else rests on what happens in these 30 minutes Joe Azero kicking off for Notre Dame Frank Waters in single safety Waters coming up to the 10 yard line the 15 the 20 the 25 and is down at about the 31 let's see the ball squirted loose let's see if it is ruled a fumble no Michigan State retains possession as John Pergine made a hard tackle on the play, and it'll be Michigan go, State go. trying to move the ball from its own 30-yard line. In the first half, Michigan State had the ball 34 minutes to 27 for Notre Dame. Pardon me, they had the ball uh, 17 minutes to 13, which, of course, was the game plan that they wanted to use. They ran 34 plays to 27. Jimmy Ray handing off to one of his halfbacks. Dwight Lee, and there is a fumble now, and Notre Dame has recovered the football. Kevin Hardy, Pete Duranko running off to the field. Enjoy. Duranko recovered the football for Notre Dame. There is Coach Era Marcegian. And this could possibly ignite the potent Notre Dame offense. They have a first and ten at the 31 of Michigan State. And Foley O'Brien remains in at quarterback. He has thrown one touchdown pass today. And an interception by Jesse Phillips of Michigan State. And look at their joy. 
Chris, I've never seen a better interception than that. Jesse Phillips had it all the way. He went up with perfect timing. Stop action coming up, bud, and uh, perhaps you can analyze it. Flyer was the intended receiver. As you can see him start down the field, Jesse Phillips is in perfect position here. Went up in front of him, made a perfect catch. He's about two feet off the ground. He brings the ball down. His momentum carried him close to the goal line, but Michigan State has that all-important football. When the two best teams meet, things like this happen. Jimmy Ray now with his back to the wall at about the two-foot mark. Ray keeps. He is a nifty little runner. In fact, in the first half, he had some pretty good statistics. He moved that ball fairly well for Notre Dame on the ground, bud. It's the same story, Chris. The defense being set for Clinton Jones, Cavender, the piece that he plays, leaving it a little bit open for the unexpected back. Uh, Ray picked up 44 yards and 13 carries during the first half. Of course, the same thing is true counterbalance. Seymour has been thrown to twice, but has not caught a pass as yet. Jimmy Ray with Lee, Cavender, and Jones in the backfield. Second and seven from the three. Ray again. Pete Duranko there. Dwight Lee trying to block for his quarterback. Jim Lynch also in on the play. And there you see Lynch calling signals defensively for the Fighting Irish as Duffy Doherty shuffles guards with plays. It'll be a third down coming up. Third down and about six. This is as important a play as we'll have in this game. Michigan State needs the first down to avoid giving Notre Dame field position. And it's Jimmy Ray, the quarterback, that moves out. And he gets the first down, bud, that you indicated was so important. Great blocking that time on the quarterback sweep. Renner blocked down. Was able to pull the Notre Dame line in. The guards pulled to turn up the field ahead of Ray. And now they do have a reasonable shot at getting good field position. We have a record crowd of 80,011, breaking the old record of 78,733 at the Michigan game this year. Jimmy Ray, there's Gene Washington at the 20 yard line. Tom Shane covering on the play. Stop action videotape of the last play. Notre Dame, of course, not expecting the pass to be thrown. You can see Washington here as he starts downfield, breaking to the outside, a very simple cut, thrown low so that there's no chance of interception. His knee being on the ground, the ball is dead at that spot. Nine first downs for Michigan State. Another right here, and Ray has four. Moving up the middle, Larry Smith, the offensive center. Kevin Hardy on the tackle for the Fighting Irish. Jimmy Ray that time reading the defense, expected the two middle linebackers to blitz with the guards going to the outside. Automatic to the quarterback sneak to pick up the game. And the line of scrimmage will be the 27 as our end zone camera shows you Michigan State. You see Ray getting under the center, Larry Smith. You see 26, Clinton Jones. Lee is 34. And it was Lee that got the handoff on a second down play. Also on the previous shots, you could see the splits in the Michigan State line. The purpose, of course, being to spread out the tremendous size of the front four linemen of Notre Dame, Rhodes, Duranko, Hardy, and Page. So now, bud, we have a third down and seven. Notre Dame's defense forms now. The big men up front as Gene Washington splits to the right as we look on. A marker is down as Clinton Jones is forced out of bounds by Page. And also number 25, Jim Smithberger, along with John Pergeen. Marker was down on the field. Holding against Michigan State. Illegal use of this against Michigan State. 
In the first half, Chris, Michigan State had seven important third down calls. They only made it on one, but here in the second half, the first time they had the crucial third down play, they did pick up the first down. It appears, of course, that they did not get it this last time. Notre Dame refusing the penalty in order to force Michigan State to punt. That's right. Because it's a fourth down and seven for Michigan State. And Notre Dame will get its hand on the football for the second time. Tom Shane hopes to get it and do something with it. As we look at number 42, Kenny from Hawaii playing. It's a high pass. High pass. Gets it off beautifully. Tom Shane, fair catch at his own 42. Takes a cool young man to have that ball on a bad pass and then still get it away. Notre Dame takes over. Time out here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. The score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 7. Gillette packs an avalanche of smooth shaving comfort in new Gillette Foamy. Nobody makes a lather like Foamy. So moist, so rich, so creamy. Nobody makes a lather like Gillette. Who's ready to swear off drunk hair? I am. My colic's drunk. Heads up will lick your colic. My hair is plastered. Heads up won't plaster down. It's based on a greaseless wonder synthetic that's clean and natural. Grooms like water only better. Won't dry up. You go bottle water, it's got to make you heads up, hands down. Take the pledge. As we look at the Notre Dame offensive team, we'd like to point out that Unfortunately, technically, electronically, we have lost all our cameras except the end zone and sideline cameras. So we'll try our best to cover it with just a few. Holy uh, O'Brien to Bob Blyer, and Blyer is tripped up by Sterling Armstrong, number 31. So Notre Dame has moved from its own 43 out to the 48-yard line, a gain of five on Blyer's run. It'll be second and five. Michigan State leads 10 to seven. Notre Dame trying to fight back. Bob Gladio coming to the near side. Seymour split opposite. Larry Conjar carried on the play and he gets into Michigan State territory at about the 48 yard line. Richardson on the tackle. Once again, Notre Dame apparently feels that Michigan State is more concerned about their passing than their running. They reverted to the running attack. A measurement now taking place, and you see less than a yard for a Notre Dame first down. So it'll be third down. At this point, from a coaching standpoint, you always wonder should you pressure them to try to keep them from making the first down and leave yourself vulnerable for the long gainer, or do you play a steady defense that will prevent the long gainer? In this case, I would guess Michigan State will go get them. Both Terry Hanratty and Nick Eddy, two stars of Notre Dame, were injured early in the ball game. Shoulder injuries on the part of both. So Coley O'Brien and Bob Gladio have filled in third and less than a yard. And it appears that Coley O'Brien from McLean, Virginia, has the first down for the Fighting Irish. Very good call by O'Brien. He set a double flanker to the bottom of your screen, causing the Michigan State secondary to have to move to that side and then ran the sneak back to the short side tackle at the top of your screen. Callie O'Brien, number three, directing the attack. What a responsibility for a sophomore. Played some this year, but not a lot. Liar inside the 45 of Michigan State. George Webster, the co-captain, made the play. Second down, second. We received word from the Notre Dame bench, Coach Era Parsegian, that neither 
Terry Henratty or Nick Eddy will play today unless it's a dire emergency. Now, Bud, that can mean almost anything. It looks to me like it is constantly. <laughs> Dave Haley is in the Notre Dame lineup now, going out on a pass. But the Michigan State pass rush, led by Richardson, 57, 82, George Chatless and Bubba Smith, number 95, and look at the size, 6'8", 290 pounds. It's the first time this afternoon that the Michigan State rush has gotten to Notre Dame. It came at a very fine time for the Spartan cause because it gave them reasonable field position again. So now it is third down and 19. Dave Haley, a speedster, is flanked to the near side. Flyer. The first man to nearly get Blyer was uh, Bubba Smith, but then Charlie Thornhill filled in the linebacker along with George Chatless. Blyer moves to the 48-yard line, a gain of four, but it's going to be a fourth down and 15. And Alan Brenner, the sophomore from Michigan State, goes back deep, now joined by number 43, Frank Waters. Kevin Hardy will punt left-footed for the fighting Irish. On a bouncing ball, Brennan, Brenner took the chance of trying to run it back, and he is down at the five, and downing him there was Haley for Notre Dame, as we have a uh, timeout here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. The score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 7. Now we return to our studios for this message. champion wood chopper, the proof is in the cutting. And when it comes to a champion smoking tobacco, the proof is in the puffing. That's why Prince Albert is America's largest selling smoking tobacco. Prince Albert burns steady, smokes cool, tastes fresh. Try Prince Albert's handy new foil pouch or famous pocket tin. Back again in East Lansing, Michigan, where the score is 10 to 7, Michigan State leading. As you look at other scores, we have six minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Michigan State with the ball at their own five-yard line with a first and 10. Bob Apiza is in at fullback for the Spartans. In his own end zone to Washington. Gene Washington. And that pass was in the air about 50 yards as Ray threw it on his own end zone. A very courageous call that time by Michigan State. The bootleg play, you see Washington start downfield as Ray is bootlegging the backfield, simply outrunning O'Leary. He's well behind him to make the catch and give Michigan State the field position that they have not had thus far this half. With the ball now at the 46, Ray is five for nine passing. <laughs> Beautiful play by Kevin Hardy, number 74, from Oakland, California. A junior, 6'5", 270 pounds. Ray had some running room there, had he not been caught from behind. Thrown for loss of one, so it'll be second down and 11. You just joined us, Michigan State leads Notre Dame 10 to seven. Michigan State scored first. Cavender capping a 73-yard march. Then Dick Kenny kicked a 46-yard field goal. O'Brien threw to Gladio for Notre Dame to make it 10-7. And Quentin Jones, for the second time today, shows his ability at broken field running. He is tackled by John Horney on the play. 
a new offense is set that time for Michigan State. A wing back to the bottom of your screen, an unbalanced line with the end over to the top of your screen. The Notre Dame defense had to move over. They overcharged and set up the successful draw play. Third down and two for the Spartans at the Notre Dame 47. Jimmy Ray is rushing yardage. And Bob Apiza, who had an ailing right knee in the lineup now, was tackled by Jim Lynch and John Pergine, number 50. That's the third time that Michigan State has had third down and relatively short yardage. The only time that they have made it was when they scored their touchdown from the four-yard line. On the other three third and short yardage situations, the Notre Dame defense has been able to close them off cold. There's Tom Shane. And with his low cut shoes on is Hawaiian Dick Kenny. I pass again. Tom Shane looking at it, calling for a fair catch, but then allows it to go into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Very wise decision on the part of veteran Tom Shane, number seven. Saturday afternoons in the fall mean colorful football right here on ABC. With timeout, the score is Michigan State 10. Notre Dame, seven. When modern life racks your nerves, tighter, 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 and nerves feel stretched almost to the breaking point, then headache begins. Headache with pounding, pounding pain. For fast relief, millions of people take Anison. Anison relieves pain of headache with the pain reliever doctors recommend most. Pounding pain is relieved, so tense, tight nerves ease up. Tension is relaxed. It's amazing. My pain's gone, and now I feel really relaxed. And no upset stomach for me with Anison. Remember, when modern life racks your nerves and headache brings pounding pain, take Anison. Anison relaxes tension as it relieves pain. Anison, or fast relief. Remember that ABC Sports will be bringing you all the color and excitement of postseason bowl games as soon as the regular NCAA season is concluded. You'll see live and in color the bowls, the names of which you are looking at right now. Be with us for all the action exclusively on ABC. Thus far in the ball game, Coley O'Brien has thrown 10 passes, completed four, one for a touchdown to Bob Gladio. And Raddy, when he was in, threw four, completed one. Gladio comes to the near side, as does Seymour. You see him at the bottom of your screen from the 20. Coley O'Brien. At the 30, that is Blyer. Five for 11 now. Jim Summers made the tackle for Michigan State. That's the possession type pass, Chris, we were talking about before the game. When Notre Dame scored their touchdown, they were able to hit two of those. When the secondary comes up to cover them, they leave themselves open for the long one, which resulted in the Notre Dame touchdown. R.I. formation, Conjure, Ryer, along with Gladio behind O'Brien. Good fake by O'Brien. Conjure, the fullback, stopped by Drake Garrett on the play. And Coley O'Brien now, going to the air, has moved the Fighting Irish to the 47. And a first down. Dave Haley comes into the Notre Dame lineup, replacing Bob Flyer. He wears number 22 on his white jersey. Hanjar was hit as he caught the ball. He did a great job to hold it. Jim Seymour to the far side. Gladio ups it. That was Gladio and Jess Phillips lowered the boom on the play. Have a dual isolation shot coming up of both receivers, which will give you some idea of the problem that the defense has covering. Here they start down the field. See him breaking to the inside. He's hit very hard. Beautiful defensive secondary play. You just saw both receivers on a dual isolation video take setup. Now it's a second down and 10. 
Meyer is back in the lineup. And that is Haley, number 22, from Hingham, Massachusetts, a junior. And he stepped out of bounds at the Michigan State 30. Great Garrett there to cover. Beautiful pass from sophomore Coley O'Brien. Armstrong had pulled away from the sidelines just a step too far. Normally, the defensive halfback gets as far from the sidelines as he feels he can cover when the ball is in the air, but that time O'Brien lined it, and he didn't have time to get back. Seymour to the far side, Blyer in motion. Tackle eligible play, bud, on the last one. He was certainly open. The pass was just a little bit too hard for a tackle who's not usually used to catching the ball to hang on to. That was Siler moving into the clear, but not being able to hold on to the ball. Coming into this game, O'Brien had thrown only 32 times compared to Hanratty, who had thrown 143 times. And I think this sophomore is doing a great job. Loose ball! Larry Conjure fumbles. Sterling Armstrong recovers and let's watch it again as a penalty marker is down on the field here at East Lansing. My, what collisions. They are really hitting hard. They certainly are, Chris. <laughs> Offside against Michigan State on the play, bud. That will give the ball back to Notre Dame. Let's look at that last play on stop action. You'll see what hard tackling really amounts to. Hard drive and the hard hit by Webster. The ball popping up in the air. Intercepted in the air by Armstrong. However, because Michigan State was offside, the Irish retained possession. First down on the Michigan State 25. On the 25, five yards to gain. Down is replayed. Second down. And going wide is Haley. And getting him in a hurry was Sterling Armstrong. His fumble recovery was nullified by an offside penalty against his defensive unit. So from the 21 yard line, it'll be third down and about one. Michigan State is in the lead, 10 to seven. The Miami of Ohio graduate, the former coach of Northwestern, Eric Parsegan. First down. Notre Dame and Larry Conger did it as Tom Regner did the blocking up front. And now Notre Dame. They started this drive on their own 20 yard line. They have now progressed to the Michigan State 17. It's the first time all day, Chris, we've seen them in a totally tight formation that gives you more power blocking along the line of scrimmage on a crucial third down play. Now we have a flanker and Haley at the right of your screen. At the left, that is Seymour. Liar. Liar knifes his way to about the 12, and Jim Summers makes the stop. There is Liar, number 28 for Notre Dame from Appleton, Wisconsin, a junior. The number two pass receiver on the Notre Dame roster. So now we have a second down and about five. Seymour and Haley to the near side. Kanjar, the senior fullback, carried on the play, the number two rusher. And George Webster is in on the stop, along with Charlie Cornhill, as we have a Michigan State substitute. Nick Jordan comes back in the lineup, bud. The power of the Irish running has forced Notre Dame, Michigan State, out of their 4-3 into a 5-2 with Jordan coming into the game, it probably will be in a 6-1 this time. A single man behind the quarterback, O'Brien. Three potential receivers are out, and there they go. Coley O'Brien, they're covered. Jeff Richardson, number 57, stops O'Brien. O'Brien sent out three receivers. At the end of the third quarter here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, the score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 7.
record crowd. And now with the final quarter about to start, it appears that Joe Azero, who has kicked two field goals this year in two attempts, will try to tie the score from the 17 plus 10, a 27-yard kick. Here it is. It's good. Azero from Pittsburgh, a senior, has just tied the score in the battle between the nation's number one and number two teams. And after 45 minutes, Chris, we're right back where we started. During this winter, ABC Sports will be privileged to bring you a great weekend sports lineup. On Saturday, you'll once again see the Professional Bowlers Tour, 90 minutes of exciting championship bowling by the top stars. And then, as usual, Award-winning wide world of sports traveling around the world to bring you the very best in athletic competition. And on Sundays, ABC Sports will bring you NBA basketball, another great season. On January 1st, the first game will feature the champion Boston Celtics against the Los Angeles Lakers in color from Los Angeles. Then it'll be the American sports as we have a zero kicking off to Michigan State. Frank Waters has the ball just across his own 20-yard line, and John Horney, a senior from Youngstown, Ohio, makes the stop, number 51, and White, and he'll remain on the field as Waters comes to the sideline. The score is tied, 10-10. to 10. The game of the decade, I think you'll agree, has lived up to all its advanced billing as Duffy Doherty is on the far, on the near side of the field cheering his boys on. Gene Washington now to the near side. First and ten for the Spartans. A long pass to Washington. Tom Shane covering on the play, along with Tom O'Leary, number 40. Jimmy Ray, who this year did not throw a tremendous number of passes. In fact, uh, coming into the game, only 103 had only six interceptions and 10 touchdowns and Washington has been his favorite target. Washington number 84 had caught seven touchdown passes from Ray. It appeared that time Notre Dame was ready for the long shot to him because both O'Leary and Shane were covering. From the 22 it's second down and 10 for Michigan State with a score tie. Washington. O'Leary number 40 from Columbus, Ohio, a junior, made the play on Big Gene Washington, six feet four. And Bud, uh, let's watch the way, he, the way he catches this ball, Chris. Uh, he certainly could have fumbled. You can see it on his shoulder there as he's hit, but he had good strength in his hand and wrist to not drop it as he was knocked out of bounds. That was a second down play, and now we have a measurement. Cute. State Rooters, another first down. Washington was open on that last pass, partly because the Michigan State backfield faked to the top of your screen that moved the linebackers that way and set up a one-on-one -on -one situation for Washington against O'Leary. Okay, Bud Wilkinson. Chris Shankle, along with Bud Wilkinson, hoping that you're enjoying this game. And Ray now is six for 12. 50% of his passes completed. Rush, Jimmy Ray, the junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Chris, again, that's that play we talked about where Ray looks at the defensive linebackers and if it looks that they're going to blitz down the middle with the guards going to the outside, it's an automatic check with his guards and center simply blocking those two shooting linebackers. And that time, of course, it's set up perfectly. From the 34 to the Notre Dame, 46, first down. Clint Jones, who is being most certainly keyed on in this ball game, stop by number 74, Kevin Hardy. All 278 pounds of him. What a tremendous athlete. And he's only a junior. Don't forget, there will be a great game following this one on 
big NCAA and ABC doubleheader. Second down and nine. And busting through was Jim Lynch, number 61, the captain of Notre Dame. That time again, Ray was ready to run the sneak, but the blitz that Notre Dame had on came through every gap, and there was no daylight. Notre Dame defense has allowed only an average of 75 and a half yards per game this year. Ranking in the top 10 of all the schools in the nation. And now they have got to try and stop Michigan State who has a third and 11 from the 47. <laughs> Incomplete. A marker is down. There you see an illegal motion signal from the referee, Howard Wirtz. He is talking to Captain Jim Lynch of Notre Dame. It was a third down and 11 play with the score tied 10 to 10. The penalty, the illegal motion penalty, has been declined. The last two times Notre Dame and Michigan State has had to punt, the pass has been awfully high. I know that Kenny this time hopes it will be right in his hands so that he will be able to get the kick away with good timing, hopefully close to the Notre Dame goal line. Tom Shane is deep, number seven. And it's sky high. Fair catch at about the seven yard line. I was surprised to see Shane catch the ball there, Chris. Normally, safety men do not handle the ball inside the 10 yard line. I think he lost track of where he was on the field. It's time out here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan, where the score is Notre Dame 10, Michigan State 10. play we have seen here today on this particular tackle Charlie Bailey and Charles Thornhill did the job now here are two teams the number one scoring team in the nation at 37 points per game Notre Dame and the number four scoring team Michigan State with 31 points thus far they have each scored 10 it's second down and nine from the eight Bob Blyer the ball carrier Charlie Bailey, again, up front work for Michigan State. There you get a, an idea of the 80,000 and 11 fans that are here today. A record crowd. This stadium was built in 1923, holding only 14,000. It has been enlarged four times since. Seymour to the near side. Third down and six. Go, go, go. And Blair was gunning for the first down and let's see how near he came. Doesn't appear that he made it as Bailey and Jim Summers made the stop for Coach Duffy Doherty. The most important place on the field to make the first down is when you're behind your own 20 yard line. Notre Dame took three hard shots in an effort to do so but they fell short by a couple of yards and now are forced to punt. Kevin Hardy who was the first three letter man in 19 years at Notre Dame, football, basketball, and baseball will now punt for the Fighting Irish. Alan Brenner is deep. 
And Hardy gets off a of beauty. At the 46, it's Alan Brenner. And Brenner is smashed by Tom Rigner, the offensive left guard from Kenosha, Wisconsin. As we look at Brenner number 86, excitement, color, and tradition every Saturday on NCAA college football. With time out here, the score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 10. Hey, Norm, how about a big smile? Hey, Thank you. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer. In just about 60 seconds, I'll have a color picture here of Philadelphia quarterback Norm Sneed. You've probably been taking pictures for years, but if you haven't been using one of these Polaroid color pack cameras, you've really been missing something. There's nothing like seeing your pictures right after you take them. This model I'm using here is the finest automatic camera Polaroid's ever made. But with Christmas just around the corner, you'll be glad to know that now there's a whole line of Polaroid color pack cameras starting at under $60. They all take color pictures in 60 seconds and black and whites in 15. Load the same easy way and use the same great film. And remember, they start at under $60. Okay, let's take a peek. This color is really something. Is there any other way to take pictures? Score tied. We'd like to remind you to stay tuned immediately following this game for college football today as Jim McKay and Kyle Rudd will be on hand to bring you all the scores. And don't forget the second game of today's doubleheader. Bob Apiza from Honolulu, Hawaii. One of three Hawaiians on the Michigan State roster carried and Pete Duranko made the stop. I'm certainly impressed with the marvelous punting of Kevin Hardy of Notre Dame. He's kicked six times for 43, 39, 42, 51, 47, and 47 yards from the line of scrimmage. That's truly booming. It. And uh, as we pointed out earlier, it's the first time that he has punted during this season. But Cavender has replaced Bob Apiza in the lineup as Clint Jones. Again, tackled by punter, defensive tackle, Kevin Hardy. So look the ball now at the 49. It'll be a third down coming up and six for Michigan State. The score is tied. Ten to ten. Two field goals. One by Dick Kenny from 46 yards out. And Joe Azero of Notre Dame kicked one of 27 yards. Washington to the near side. Lee, a wingman to the opposite. There's Washington. So for Michigan State, it is fourth down. That last play was a very good indication of the value of being able to roll out. Ray was rushed over the middle, but was able to roll out and get the pass away. You can see Washington was open, but the rush was just hard enough to have the ball thrown slightly too high and incomplete, forcing Michigan State to punt. And again, we see Dick Kinney and Tom Shane, number seven of Notre Dame. Score tied, 10-10, 8 minutes, 52 seconds left in it. Up in the air, a total of eight seconds, allowing those kick coverage men to get there the minute Tom Shane caught the ball. When you get that good snap from center and you time it properly, you have a kicker of Kenny's ability, you have what it takes to maintain field position. All right, bud, and now it will be Notre Dame getting the ball. It was said that the kicking today would probably play an important part in the outcome. We're in the fourth and final quarter. Seymour to the near side. Coley O'Brien gonna keep her. Dwayne McIver, and there's Era Parsegian. Also into the play for Michigan State was senior co-captain George Webster from Anderson. South Carolina. He made a great play, Chris. The fake to the fullback was excellent. As you can see him here, getting ready, he'll watch the fake to the inside, avoid the blocker, move to the outside. Great recovery and a very fine tackle. Second and nine from the 14, Coley O'Brien. And Seymour drawing triple coverage. Led by Jim Summers, the defensive halfback. 
That was the third time that they've tried to throw to him today, Chris. And as you pointed out, with those three men around him, it's easy to see why they don't think he's the number one target. There is Coach Duffy Doherty, a Syracuse man, a native of Barnesboro, Pennsylvania, and an old player of mine. That's right. Seymour to the near side, third down and nine for Notre Dame. Seymour is there, but the pass was high. Causing uh, perhaps the inaccurate pass was a rush by Jeff Richardson. Let's see dual isolation and see what the pass patterns were of Notre Dame. As you can see, both receivers going downfield. They do spread the defense, and that time Seymour was open because they had a flanker on both sides of the field, as you can see, with a dual isolation. So it's uh, Kevin Hardy that will punt once more. Alan Brenner is alone in single safety. A fine punt, a fair catch at the 48 of Michigan State. So actually, uh, on the exchange, Notre Dame gained one yard. It's time out here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. The score is Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 10. And now we return to our studios for this message. Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. Game of the decade. And there you see the score, 10 to 10. We have 7 minutes, 34 seconds left in the game, bud. Uh, Notre Dame has been putting on a tremendous rush up the middle. I believe on this series of downs, we can see Michigan State work a little more on the Notre Dame flanks than they have been. The way they have run the ball has forced Notre Dame out of their 4-4 into the 6-2 that you see here. Jimmy Ray, who's 6 for 13 passing, sticks to the ground, and Dwight Lee, the junior from New Haven, Michigan, is stopped on the play by Captain Jim Lynch and John Pergine of Notre Dame. So, the Spartans move the ball into Notre Dame territory to the 49, a gain of three, so it'll be second down and seven. Seven minute mark coming up now with the score tied. Our eye formation, they pass from it. Intended for Dwight Lee, number 34 of Michigan State. This year he had caught six passes, and Jimmy Ray now is six for 14. He slipped a little bit that time, Chris, as he rolled out. The rollout is being used, of course, to avoid that tremendous rush up the middle. By rolling out, you're running away from people shooting up the middle if they are successful in getting through the gap. From the 49 of Notre Dame, Michigan State, third down seven. Our eye formation. Intercepted by Tom Shane. Tom Shane, a former quarterback at Notre Dame, will get another star on his gold helmet as a result of an interception here today. That was a beautiful play by Shane. He now has five interceptions, so we'll call him a five-star fighting Irishman. Credit for the rush there also. It forced Ray to throw when he's off balance. From midfield, Coley O'Brien gives to Rocky Blyer, who goes to the 45 of Michigan State. Charlie Thornhill and Jeff Richardson make the play. So, you Notre Dame fans, you have a little life as Notre Dame's Tom Shane came up with the interception, and there's the Notre Dame coach. From the 45 now, it'll be second down and six. Dave Haley is to the far side along with Seymour at the top of your screen. Coley O'Brien gets a rush, and he got a rush that was tremendous by Charlie Thornhill, number 41. Second time that the rush has gotten home to O'Brien, and it was very fortunate because the receiver was wide open. So now we'll have a third down and six coming up or Notre Dame at the 45 of Michigan State. 10 to 10 with about six minutes left in the game. Seymour to the near side. Dave Haley, a junior to the far side, top of your screen. And pinching in was George Chatless, number 82 on O'Brien. 
The pass was intended for Blyer. So, Bud, once more, it's a fourth down and six with the score tied and the closing moments of the big battle. The screen was set up perfectly, and Chatlow's not gotten to O'Brien to force him to throw before he was ready. That play could have gone the distance. There is number 86, Alan Brenner, for Michigan State, as Kevin Hardy will punt now for the fourth time here in the second half. And he skies it. It'll uh, go into the end zone, through it, and it'll come back out where Michigan State will have the ball at their own 20-yard line. First down. We have just received word that after medical examination, Terry Hanratty has a shoulder separation, and his arm is in a sling, so needless to say, he won't have an opportunity to come back out and show his great skill. Uh, the interception gave Notre Dame much better field position than they've had at any time in the fourth quarter. Michigan State was within about 15 yards of field goal range. Now they're backed up 80 yards from the goal line. A Pisa in a pullback from the 20. First down. Tom Shane, his second interception. his second interception in a matter of a few minutes here. That's what that, the stop action on the play. On this particular play, Shane looks as though he's Willie Mays patrolling center field. The receiver starts downfield, breaks to the inside, and here comes Shane. Perfect catch. He picks up beautiful blocking, moves the ball to the 18-yard line. And now, of course, Notre Dame is in field goal range, and even if their offense does not move the ball to the goal line. And from the 19-yard line, it was Larry Conjar, the fullback, that carried for the Fighting Irish. We have five minutes, 35 seconds left in the game with a score tied. Jeff Richardson on the tackle. Three interceptions now by Notre Dame today, where Jimmy Ray, this year, was intercepted only six times in nine games. Now it's a second down and nine for Notre Dame. Dave Haley. We have to salute Haley for not fumbling the ball because Bubba Smith and Charlie Thornhill, along with Phil Hoek, really hit him. Michigan State took the big gamble that time. They poured eight men through single coverage on any receivers, but they were gambling. Notre Dame would not throw the ball. So it'll be a third down and 17 from the Michigan State 24 as a result of that loss when play is resumed. This Saturday must certainly rank as a great one for football fans. This game between the Fighting Irish and the Spartans of Michigan State will decide the national championship. And following this game, you'll see either the Southern California UCLA game with the Rose Bowl bid going to the winner, or the California Stanford game. So please consult your local listings for the time and game in your area. Capacity crowd, in fact, it's a record crowd of 80,011. Coach Ara Parsegian has made a defensive change for the Fighting Irish. Trinity has come into the lineup. He wears number 21. Did I say defensive change? I meant an offensive change. Five yards. Charleston, West Virginia, sophomore number 21, Frank Trinity. 5'8, 173, with a third and 17 at the 24. Out goes Seymour. Flyer is out there. Bubba Smith tipped the ball. And Coley O'Brien now is faced with a fourth down and 17. With four minutes and 43 seconds left in the ball game. The score tied. Look how wide open Flyer was. Seymour was deep in the end zone, and there is Flyer just waiting. Very fortunate that that ball was tipped. Now they kick from the 31. It's a 41-yard attempt 
by Joe Azero. He's three for three this year. It's up. No good. second half have reverted to the kick and football and now Michigan State first and 10 from their own 20. Clint Jones is thrown for a loss by Pete Duranko 240 pounds number 64. Time left score tied. The draw play is supposed to slow up the rush but that time Duranko read the draw so well that instead of slowing up the rush it resulted in a loss for Michigan State and will do nothing to change the Notre Dame defensive tactics. Gene Washington to the near side. Dwight Lee is a flankered opposite. Second and that was a second down and 15 play. The pass intended for Washington with O'Leary covering. And now Jimmy Ray has thrown 17 he has completed six Notre Dame has attempted 24 completing eight this is a very tough call Michigan State of course going for victory they've got third down with approximately 26 yards to go do you go for the long pass which Notre Dame expects do you try the draw the screen or do you run a straight ahead play expecting them to drop out let's see slot formation with a flanker third and 15. Going to be mighty close. Cavender, the sophomore fullback, wheels his way out near the 30. And a measurement now is being requested by Jimmy Ray, the quarterback. Of all the calls that the quarterback could have made, that of course was the least expected. And you do the thing the defense does not expect you're likely to come up with the big yardage. It's very close to the first down. I don't believe that he quite made it. Let's see. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in the game with the score tied. Inches away from a first down. And that's a good reminder on your screen right now. Fourth down and a foot to go. The national championship riding. Do you kick it and play for a tie? Or do you go for victory? And as you can see here, Michigan State believes in trying to win. Jimmy Ray at quarterback. And it, he gets it, first down, Michigan State. And there is a mark and confidence that the coaching staffs have of their football team, but it's also a mark of rare courage because tie games do not upset the alumni too much, but they're very unsatisfactory to the players and the coaches, and it was go for broke. That's right, the number one, the number two teams in the country. Extraordinary teams. From the 31, first and 10 for Michigan State. Two minutes, 55 left. And look at that pursuit by the Notre Dame defense. Jim Lynch, Alan Page, Kevin Hardy, all there on Jones, the All-American. Jones has been one of the fine running backs in the country for three years. The Notre Dame linebackers are keen on him. He's had great difficulty running from scrimmage today. And now Duffy Doherty is switching tackles. Jerry West and Roger Ruminski bringing in plays. Now it's a second and 13 following that three yard loss from the 28. Two minutes, 20 seconds left in the ball game. The score is tied. That's pretty in the clock. And the man that has been seldom used, Alan Brenner, gets the forward pass and brings Michigan State out to its own 36-yard line for an eight-yard gain. It's third down and five. A great example of what we call a series play. You notice the Notre Dame linebackers swarm all over Clinton Jones. That was the fake to Clinton Jones going to the top of your screen. The linebackers moved with the fake that made Brenner open, picking up a good yardage. Now Brenner's to the 
Far side on a third and five. Brenner, Brenner broke the wrong way. Jimmy Ray threw the pass to the left. Brenner broke to the right. Smithberger covering. Let's watch the wrong way pattern of uh, Alan Brenner, but perhaps the quarterback, Bud, could have thrown it wrong way. With this kind of noise, sometimes you don't hear the signal. As you can see, he thought the pass was coming to his inside. He was surprised when it went to his outside. So it's a fourth down, and kicking will be Dick Kenny. Tom Shane is back. There he is. A minute 35 seconds left in the game. Fair catch called for at the... Oops. Notre Dame's Tom Shane recovers his own fumble, but do both teams want this ball game? Wow. Such collisions. The fair catch is supposed to be a easy play to execute, but with tension <laughs> as high as it is now, Chris, there is no easy play. Right. And we have a minute and 24 seconds left in the game. 10 to 10, Michigan State and Notre Dame. Neither team has taken a timeout thus far, Chris, in this half, so they will be able to use quite a bit of this clock. Coley O'Brien filling in for the injured Terry Henratty. Fakes beautifully. Gets a block from Conjure. And then trips over his own man. Great defensive play by Thornhill that time. He was blocked. He fought through the blocker and almost through the blocker into the ball carrier. The play looked like it would pick up a great deal more than the four yards. 47 seconds left in the ball game. Second down and six. Score tied. Here's Coley O'Brien. Rocky Blyer. George Webster is number 90. And let's give credit to another Michigan State man on the far side who assisted on the play. Bill Hoek, number 36. So now it's going to be a third down coming up. The clock is stopped with 34 seconds left in the game. The score tied. The ball is at the 36-yard line. It'll be a third down and four, bud. Michigan State apparently has confidence in their ability to stop Notre Dame on the next play because they are the team, Chris, that took the timeout. Michigan State, during the regular season, winning 19 straight. Coach Era Parsegan, who has a tremendous record in his three years at Notre Dame, 24 victories, three losses, and one tie. At the moment, we have a tie ball game. About 34 seconds isn't, isn't really a long period of time. Well, what is if uh, Notre Dame can pick up this first down because they will have good field position with four timeout remaining. It doesn't take very long to run a play, Chris, when you can kill the clock even right. if you do not get out of bounds, and it gives you the whole field from sidelines to sidelines to work on offensively. Haley goes to the far side, Seymour to the near side. Third and four. That was Conjure that was trying for the first down. Let's watch it closely. The uh, referee indicated that it is a fourth down. They did not make the first down. It's just shy of the 40-yard line. And now Era Parsegian faces the same decision that Duffy Doherty had a few moments ago. Do you kick it away, or do you try to keep possession of the football? Terry Hanratty is over there directly behind Era Parsegian boy that uh, sustained a shoulder separation early in the ball game and we have to salute Coley O'Brien for pulling in so capably. It looks as though we're going to have a player come into the ball game. Number 38 of Notre Dame comes into the lineup. That is Dushney, Ron Dushney in the lineup. If the game does end in the tie, Chris, it's one of those contests that makes you feel you ought to have an extra period in college football. <laughs> but Notre Dame lines up in an eye with a wing back, and the linemen are in punch. There they go, trying for the first down, and they get it. Holy O'Brien. 
Just kept that ball, and you see there are 10 seconds left in this battle. At halftime, it was 10 to 7. So we have only had a field goal kicked here in the second half. Touchdowns by Cavender of Michigan State today, by Gladio of Notre Dame, Dick Kenny kicking a 46 yard field goal, and Joe Azero kicking a field goal for Notre Dame. When you have two fine teams that are as well coached as these two 11s, they have an opportunity between halves to go in and discuss their strategy. Oftentimes, they get pretty much of a defensive stalemate in the second half. First and 10 from the 41. Two dangerous men set out here to the near side. Dwyer, Timor, and Bubba Smith, number 95, breaking through as a Michigan State player appears to have been shaken up on the blitz of the quarterback and the pinching by defensive end Phil Hoeg. We have six seconds showing on the clock here at Spartan Stadium. That's the third time out for Michigan State. The second down coming up, it doesn't appear that they will be able to stop the clock enough to get possession themselves again. A 30-second meeting between these two schools in a series that has been most outstanding. Notre Dame leading in the series, 17 games. To 12, but since 1948, State has won 12 and Notre Dame has won four. State won last year 12 to 3. The previous year, Notre Dame with John Hewitt and Jack Snow down the Spartans. Seymour to the near side. And Coley O'Brien retains possession. And it looks like that's all at Spartan Stadium. There is Coach Arapar Segan coming across the field, the native of Cleveland, Ohio, in that maze of people, probably trying to find Coach Duffy Doherty. Arrow looking off to the near sideline, and currently there at the moment will not be any meeting between these two. Our thanks to our spotter Bill Friel and statistician Ben Gates. Once again, the final score, Michigan State 10, Notre Dame 10. This is Chris Schenkel, along with Bud Wilkinson, saying so long from East Lansing, Michigan. And Aloha also. Air travel arrangements for NCAA football made through United Airlines who also furnish promotional consideration. NCAA college football. America's great traditional autumn spectacle has been brought to you by Oldsmobile in behalf of your nearest Oldsmobile dealer, whose rocket action cars are out front again in 67. By Goodyear, this year as in every year for 51 consecutive years, more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other kind. By Winston, America's largest selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should.